Welcome to It's Not Crazy, It's Science. Today we're talking about density and fluids. Some quick definitions first. Density is a ratio of mass per volume and fluids refers to liquids or gases. The origin of the word density actually refers to thickness. And for an object to be thicker, it has a lot of weight for its size. By the way, another way to think of density is how heavy an object is for its size. And the heavier it gets for its size, the denser it is. You see, density is a property that determines whether an object will float or sink. Less dense objects float, while denser objects sink. This motion of fluids causes some interesting things to happen, including the process of convection, which is basically the motion of fluids in a circular direction. I have two containers here. One has foam cubes and the other beans. Both are filling the same volume, a 500 milliliter container or 500 cc container. Let's go to our density expert, Bubba. The beans are denser. Well, I guess we know which one is denser. At any rate, I can already feel that the beans are heavier for their size, but exact quantitative data is always a good idea, so let's weigh them. When determining which is denser, it's as simple as the definition of density. Mass per volume is the same as saying mass divided by volume. The mass of the cubes is 50 grams, whereas the mass of the beans is 417 grams. When this fraction is formed, you can already see we're comparing two fractions with a common denominator. The fraction with more mass, the one with greater numerator, is denser because it has more mass per volume. After using the formula and some rounding to the nearest hundredth, we can compare how much it weighs per milliliter, which means we are still comparing fractions with equal denominators. It just so happens that the denominator is now one milliliter. The density of the beans is 0.83 grams per milliliter and the foam cubes are 0 0.10 grams per milliliter. Now compare the numbers and you could decide which has more mass per milliliter. Bubba? I got nothing. <sighs> the beans are denser and the foam cubes are less dense. If we take a close look at these particles, we can see 15 of them. Let's go ahead and say that they're grams. So there's 15 grams of mass. Now let's look at their volume. This square will represent a volume of one cubic centimeter. That would make the density 15 grams per cubic centimeter, or 15 grams per cc. Now, if that mass were to expand, what now fits inside that volume is fewer particles, nine to be exact. So the density of the object has decreased to nine grams per cubic centimeter. Here's a comparison. You can see the one on the left has more density because there are more particles for the same amount of space. On the other side, there are fewer particles for the same amount of space. Therefore, it has less mass per volume. This time-lapse video displays one of my favorite small-scale demonstrations of convection. On top is the red hot water, the clear water in the middle is room temperature, and at the bottom is the blue cold water. When the video resumes, watch how the hot water eventually cools and sinks directly to the bottom. Initially, it's hard to see the blue cold water rising, but pay close attention to the last few seconds. Look for that circular motion. Imagine this happening on a global scale and you will start seeing how density and convection play a major role in Earth's weather. 
This image represents what is known as the Great Ocean Conveyor Belt, as it shows the density currents. As you can see, convection helps circulate heat throughout the planet. These currents are the direct result of warm and cold fluids rising and sinking as they change temperatures along their journey. This also supports why locations closer to bodies of water may experience different climates than other locations. From space, we get a bigger picture of how convection plays a part in global weather. Keep in mind that the equator is the warmest region when it is compared to the North and South Poles. Because of this, masses of fluids, remember that's liquid and gases, will heat up near the equator, expand, become less dense, and rise. Oppositely, cooler masses near the poles will cool down, contract, become denser, and sink. This creates convection, the movement of fluids in a circular direction. And by the way, this process is responsible for most of Earth's cloud formation, which we will get into in a future lesson. The concept of density and why objects float and sink can be a challenging idea to master, especially when very heavy objects float and some very light objects sink. Take, for example, a cruise ship and a small stone. The cruise ship floats, but the rock will sink. Why? It all has to do with density, and while it may not be obviously clear, the rock is denser than water, and the cruise ship. But it's so small. Yes, but it is heavy for its size. Water's density is one gram per milliliter, or cc. An equal volume of water compared to the rock would prove that. Same with the cruise ship. A cruise ship made completely of water would weigh more than the actual cruise ship. Mathematically, the cruise ship must weigh less than one gram per cc. Incidentally, the ship weighs little for its size, and the air in its bulkhead helps spread out the heavier particles that make up the boat, making it not as thick and dense as the water beneath it. Well, that brings us to the end of the episode. I hope that this lesson has had a massive effect on your learning and that you have volumes of new information. And remember, it's not crazy, it's science.